halfway through the year and I've finished six different games so far. So I'm definitely on a nice pace here. This is Love of Ladies and I'm going to be talking about the good and bad of the games I did manage to play on this channel for the past season. I'm also going to give you a heads up on what direction I am taking with this channel for season six. But I do like to take a few moments to let you know I do love and appreciate the support you have given me for the past couple of months. And I am looking forward to basically entertaining you for the next three. I love the story of Batman the Telltale series. The fact that any little choice you make can not only impact certain characters and how they react to you, but it can actually impact the whole story in general, even up to the very end of said series. I just wish that in terms of graphic wise, definitely fix the pixelation. I did notice how when it comes to close-ups or even scenes where the characters would talk to each other, there's always that weird pixelation that seems like it's going in and out of focus, which I found that to be pretty annoying. But regardless of that little issue, this game is definitely worth playing. I feel like WWE 2K Battlegrounds is a great game to start off with if you are curious about wrestling in general. Yes, it does have the Money in the Bank Royal Rumble matches, but it also comes with a cute cartoonish storyline, which definitely does entertain you as well. Unfortunately, I actually had to end the series early since I was actually stuck at not only one but two matches and because i wasn't able to beat the opponents i was basically stuck so instead of just dragging out the series i figured i had to gracefully end it before it got still similar to batman the telltale series until dawn is one of those games where whatever choices you make will impact the story and i just love how with whatever decisions you make, it has a crazy butterfly effect, which definitely adds in the intensity of this horror game. And honestly, out of the games that I've finished playing for season five, I have no complaints about it at all. Playing Injustice 2 is such a good upgrade compared to part one. I mean, the graphics alone speaks volumes. And thankfully, a couple of superheroes did have a good makeover as well. And I just love how WB has tried its best to remain consistent with the storyline as well, since part two takes place after the events of part one. And even though the storyline is actually pretty great, the bad part about this is there are a few little details that definitely leaves me with questions. Now, for starters, I do notice that there are certain characters that were in part one, like Hawkgirl and Raven, that did not appear in Injustice 2. It's like not only were they swept under the rug, per se, but they didn't even tell us what happened to them at all. It's like they never really existed in the first place, which I find that to be a potential loss, since that could have been part of some subplot, or maybe even a foreshadowing of some kind for Injustice 3, if they decide to even do that in the first place. Predator Hunting Grounds is one of those games where team-based gaming is actually necessary and not optional. Because if you try to do the missions yourself, 10 out of 10, you will die. And 
even though it's a great team game to do, as well as the horror aspect of the cat mouse chase, would I recommend this game? Yes or no? Because of the fact that, yes, this game would be perfect to play with friends. No, this game would not be good when you play with random people. Because throughout the series, when I've been dealing with random players, either they purposely mess up the game and have us all killed, or they basically don't put in enough effort or work to help with the mission. Hence why we also get killed as well. So if you have friends and you are looking to play a game together, this would be it. Rainbow Six Siege is one of the games where you have to have good Wi-Fi. I noticed later on in the series that not only did I suffer a lot of lagging up to the point where I would either get kicked before a match was set up or even during the match. And I just feel like if you have an established game like Rainbow Six Siege, you should have and automatically have a dedicated server. But in terms of playing the series, there have been times where I've had lots of connectivity issues, which impacted the game severely up to a point where I've lost a couple matches because of that. Otherwise, this game is a great team-based game. Just like Predator Hunting Grounds, you definitely need to play as a team. If not, you will definitely lose. Thank you so much for watching the video. Like and subscribe. And here is the games I will be playing for Season 6.